Good morning from Salina, Utah. We are here at the Camp Salina uh, Prisoner of War Camp. They have a museum and they have, you know, a few different buildings. They have a cemetery here. It's pretty early in the morning, so uh, nothing is open. And uh, so we won't be able to really explore around, try to peek in the windows, see what, what there is. But uh, we're starting the western half of Utah. So yesterday we went from the Colorado border to here in Salina. And then now we're going to head to the Nevada border today. And there's not very many towns. I've only counted, you know, a half dozen or so towns between here and Nevada. So very wide open. Uh, Salina is interesting because this is a kind of a intersection point for a couple of different roads. There's obviously US 50. Uh, you know, 70 is also, you know, US 50 at this point. And then US 89 goes north and south. So I did US 89 a couple years ago. And I actually stayed here in this town as well. So kind of a good memory of, I was heading south to Mexico at that point, and now we're heading west to California. We're starting the day here in Salina as we came in in our previous video there from the east on 70 and 50 on the interstate. Originally 50 went north of here and came down on 89. It went actually up to Salt Lake City which is directly north a little bit and then later on it went over to Provo from the east and then came down and then in the 70s when I-70 was built, that's kind of when US-50 was rerouted down through here. So, But Salina has always been a point, um, whether it's from the, the east here directly or from the north in Salt Lake City. So we're going to head out and it becomes you know, a two-lane road and out of town pretty much goes directly north. And it continues north all the way to Scipio and then it kind of zigzags as it combines with Interstate 15 down to Holden and then goes back north again. Sometimes I like stopping at these old cemeteries and sometimes it tells history of towns and, and for this one's kind of interesting because this was original pioneers of the town who are buried here and then no one is buried here after something like in the 1890s except for if you're a you know direct descendant of someone that's buried here before that. Even though this is being released much later, I'm actually here on July 24th, and that's Pioneer Day in Utah, uh, celebrating the Mormon pioneers every year. And so they're in a little town like this with 300 people. Uh, they have a parade where all the locals come out and throw candy to the kids.
so this part of Utah is basically on US 50, the last town um, until we get to Nevada. So <clears throat> there's still, you know, 80 some miles left on US 50. Uh, so I'm gonna explore around a little bit, maybe just south of US 50 and see what else we can find. We're gonna explore around south of Hinkley a little bit. There's a few towns, as you can see on the map. And then we're gonna go check out over here where it says Great Stone Face. Just south of the town of Deseret is Fort Deseret, and I found this to be a pretty interesting little stop. The fort was built in 1865, and it was during the, the Utah Black Hawk War, which was mainly between the Mormons of the area here that were settling and a variety of Native American tribes, and it was from 1865 to 1872, the government was busy with the Civil War, and so the army was not able to help, so they said for the locals to, to do something to protect themselves, and it actually was quite successful. They built this adobe structure. It was 550 square feet, and it was uh, proved successful when they were negotiating uh, a peace settlement with those Native Americans. On trips like this, I would love to stop as all kinds of places like that that are historical places in fact there's an old japanese internment camp not too far north from here but if i only did that i would never get to my destination so just know there are many more places than what i'm showing you and if i don't go to one of those places just know that you know there is limited time in a day and at some point i got to get to my destination so uh but you go these you know historical roads like this you can go as fast as you want and get to the end, or you can really kind of put along and as I say, get distracted in a good way by everything that's around you. See my car down there and you can go two different ways you can go straight up at it which is very vertical I came this other way which is still a good hike but a little more gradual thinking I'd be there almost at this point and I look and I'm like I still got to go up quite a bit dang it there it is now, some people say this looks like Joseph Smith, leader of the Mormons, and obviously we're in Mormon country. And some people think it's a Native American face. I almost missed it as I was leaving the great stone face there. And then right here, there's a little display. And I thought, oh, I'll pull over and look at it. And there are petroglyphs, right? There, that are thousands of years old, they say. Very cool. I thought that hike was a little bit toasty. Now I'm trying to go over to some uh, massacre site and you never know if this is a road or not or if I have to go all the way back around but let's see you 
can see where Great Stone Face is and those little dashes are gravel and dirt roads. I'm trying to get over to where it says Gunnison Massacre Historical Monument and then over to US 50. And the roads aren't very good. We'll have to just try to work our way through there to see if we can make it all the way through. So that last one was a road and then there's supposed to be another road up here. But it's sometimes it's just a rancher's driveway. Which it appears this is. So there's no real road to where I want to go. I'm back here. What's this? I mean, there's something, but is that where I want to go? Looks like the road I'm supposed to take. Fight the road. I don't know whenever I'm the phone is shaking, so I'm <laughs> weeds underneath. It's a rental car. I always try to get a good clearanced vehicle in case of a road like this. I don't know, would you keep going? I know sitting there watching, you're probably like, yeah, go on. But I've definitely had some thoughts about turning around, but I guess I'll just go until I can't go any farther. Hopefully it comes out on the other side. I'm heading towards US 50, but um, I don't know. We'll see if we actually can get there. Yeah, that was a, what I was afraid of. Cause this goes down, hard to tell on the camera. Goes down pretty steep. I'm gonna walk and look, but this is really rough. It goes that way. Well, I think I'm going to turn around. I usually will go about as far as I can take it, and this is probably it. <laughs> I am. I've been going for miles and miles, and yeah, probably smart. Turn around, even though it's going to take a good half an hour to backtrack, but I would like to survive to finish the trip, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn around. I think in all the years of driving, that's the first time I've had to turn around where it wasn't private property. You know, sometimes you get to a private property sign, don't drive through, but yeah, usually I can make it on through. And I might have been able to, but you know, taking a chance, it's about 110 degrees and there's no cell phone service out here. And uh, you know, you want to be smart in these situations, so it would have been uh, risky, and I don't think the reward was worth the risk. So we are driving back through the rough desert road, and we're going to connect back with US 50 and head towards Nevada. So I don't know anything about this. Um, 
Gunnison Massacre Site. It says 1853, October 26th. There's more information at the Great Basin Museum in Delta, which we passed through earlier today. And this is what I was trying to find <laughs> when I was going to the middle of nowhere. I looked on the map and the road was going to come out right over here. So that's where it should have eventually come out to. But yeah, I didn't make it. So I'm half curious as to, to go that far and see <laughs> what it looks like, but nah. Let's, let's head on west. So this is current 50. And then this is old 50. When we get back on US 50, you can see it goes pretty much south into the west, but right above that is old Highway 6 and 50. And so that's the decision I'm making whether to take US 50 today's route or to take the old Highway 50. And as you can see, the current version of US 50 is just a long, you know, fairly straight road over to the Utah border. There's no towns. And so I decided to stay on the north to the old dusty road. You might wonder why I would choose to do the uh, gravel road instead of the main US 50. And, and certainly I, I want to go into the main US 52 as well, but if this was the original US 50, then, um, then probably not very many people have gone this way. Same thing when I did the Oregon Trail last year. I tried to stay as true to the trail as possible. So I probably skipped some of the main roads that people go on today that would follow the Oregon Trail. And I think we're gonna get up here to some, maybe go in between some mountains. And I'm assuming that very few people have gone this way or they have probably ever documented going this way. So what am I missing on the main um, US 50 for those of you that have gone that way? I know there's no towns until we get to the border. So am I missing anything? Um, let me know in the comments and enjoy original Highway 50. Hmm. That's the way to Death Canyon. I'm kind of curious, but I'm not going to go there today. Things have radically changed on this road. You know, the road isn't bad down here. Hmm. So I walked down to the bottom to see how the road was and it's not bad. It's kind of like average, you know, that really rocky part. That was what was concerning. If it's like this, I think I'll go ahead, but maybe I'll fly the drone and see if there's anything anywhere I shouldn't go. But you worry about the big rocks because that's where you're more likely to get a flat tire is from those big rocks than anything. So I don't want to turn around unless I have to, but we'll forge ahead. It's spectacular. <laughs> I haven't, I don't know the original, I mean the normal way of US 50, but I don't think it looks like this. Jeez.
Okay, it looks okay from above. Didn't it look like okay to you? So hopefully it's not too rocky. It looks very scenic. We're gonna take our time though, see if we can get through on the, I guess the original US 50. Could you imagine going this back in the day? That way is 50, and there's a little side road. Where does this go? I didn't want to drive much farther because these are getting really rocky, but there's supposed to be something up here. Oh my goodness, look at that. Hermit's cabin. So I don't know anything about this place. I saw it on the map a while ago as I was coming through here. I go, huh, it's called Hermit's Cabin and it was on uh, Google Maps and thought maybe it'd be alongside the road, but obviously it's not. <laughs> it is as hidden as it could be. And you just never know what you're gonna see or meet as you walk up here. And wow, I'm so glad I took old 50 just to see Hermit's Cabin and uh, sign my name. And all I can say is, if you decide to go old 50, don't do it in a car. Make sure you have some good tires. Make sure you have plenty of clearance. But it'll be worth it if you hike up to Hermit's Cabin. It's awesome. It is so quiet. You can't hear anything. Back on old 50. The skies are threatening a little bit but everywhere, so no matter which way I would go, it looks like I might run into some rain, although straight ahead's not too bad. And also straight ahead is the Confusion Mountain Range. And since I'm getting towards the end of the day, I think that would be an appropriate <laughs> place to venture through, because I've been confused to try to figure out where to go most of today. That's where I just came from. I'm heading. I think that's the confusion range right there.
that marks the end of the old 50 through Utah. And we're, Nevada is just right over here. And, uh, but it turns off, this is Gandy Road. And we have 12 miles down to US 50, which we should, like I said, we should be about on the border, which is where I'm staying tonight is on the border. So what a drive. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't, I've never been on the, you know, the, the today's US 50 through Utah, through that stretch. So it may have been just as spectacular, but I thought this old 50 was great. Um, what an experience. That was a lot of fun. Let's head to the hotel. I arrived to the destination tonight, the Border Inn and Casino. It's pretty interesting because it's literally on the border. You can see where the Nevada sign is and the Utah sign and the casino is on the Nevada side and the hotel is on the Utah side. So I'll show you the hotel since that's Utah and I guess I'll have to show you maybe the rest of it tomorrow or next week when we enter into Nevada. Not the biggest TV in the world, but when you're the only hotel in town, you can do whatever you want. So I came out, they have this nice little swing right here, and thought I'd watch a nice sunset. And it is kind of the craziest sunset. I've never seen a hole in the sky of sun completely surrounded by clouds.